Thanks for joining us. We haven't had a cooking webinar in quite a while. My name is Danny Mandel, and uh, I'm very th uh, thrilled that we are doing this. Uh, I was at a Leadership Development Institute, and Larry came up to me and said, you know, I'd be happy to do another one of those. And I said, that is awesome. So here we are tonight. Uh, Larry's going to show a, a short video, and then he's going to be live in action. He actually has two cameras on, one from his iPhone and one on his laptop. So if you don't know who Larry Cleos is, Larry is one of our leading members in uh, northern New Jersey region. He's actually the first vice president, which means he will be the next regional president of our northern New Jersey region. Been very active in men's club for a long time and obviously has a passion for cooking. I believe this is Larry's third cooking webinar. Before I hand it over to Larry, I would just say, if you are interested in doing one of these, male, female, anyone, we would love, love for you to do that. It does take a good amount of work, but it, it's a lot of fun. And so please contact me, or you can just go on the FJMC website. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Larry. Take it away, Larry. Okay, so I'm going to show you a video uh, of me making shredded chicken crock pot chili. And the reason why it's a video is because you don't want to sit here and watch six or eight hours of something cooking in a crock pot. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to cook shredded chicken crock pot chili. Uh, now, you're not going to uh, be subjected to a video watching the entire cooking process, but you're going to see the important points. So, uh, we're starting to, uh, with boneless chicken breast. And since I'm going to be boneless chicken breast, I put on these gloves. Because uh, it makes uh, handling raw chicken a lot easier and cleanups a lot easier. Um, anyway, you can use any sort of food service gloves, uh, nitrile gloves, uh, or no gloves. And then you just have to wash them when you finger. So, what I have here is about three pounds of boneless chicken breast. Uh, and all I'm doing is putting it in the crock pot. That's a huge piece of fat that I'm going to pull off. Obviously, you can't totally trim it, um, but you know, any of these big chunks of fat you can pull off. Uh, you can render it and make uh, schmaltz. You don't want to do that. Anyway, now that I've put the chicken in, I dispose of the gloves, and we move on to the other ingredients. Now, I've already chopped onion, and I've chopped some jalapeno peppers, and uh, poblano peppers. And all I'm going to do is put them in the crock pot like this. I've already chopped them, as I said, because you don't want to sit here watching me cut onions or no. And just, you know, in case you're not sure, this is what a poblano pepper looks like, and this is what a jalapeno pepper looks like. I also uh, throw garlic in, and I get this garlic um, at H Mart. It's already pre-peeled, and it's very easy to deal with, and I just throw it in whole. So we're not sauteing it, we're just cooking it. And I mean, you know, if you feel like I'm putting in too much, you don't have to put in as much, but I never let a garlic clove on it. Now we go on to seasonings. Obviously, we need some chili powder. Right, right. And I just kind of sprinkled it. I, I put some actual measurements in the recipe. Uh, but they're just approximate. A lot of it is just for taste. And I kind of, 
I cook like your buddy did. You know, you sort of throw stuff in until it looks right. I'm putting in some fresh red pepper. Not a lot. And of course, you can leave it out. Uh, if you don't want your chili as spicy. And just uh, a note about uh, the peppers that I cut up. Uh, I removed the seeds and the ribs from the, the peppers. But if you want to have a really spicy chili, leave them in, chop them up with the peppers. That's where a lot of the spice lives. This is cumin. Again, just I'm doing it according to how it looks. Some black pepper. And all of this, you can adjust to your taste. And some paprika. <laughs> Salt we can add later if needed. Um, now we'll get into uh, some of the other uh, ingredients. I'm going to put in some beans. Today, I'm going to use black beans and kidney beans. You could do all of one, all of the other, or no beans at all. Now you drain the beans and rinse them off real quickly. Just throw them in. Great thing about the crock pot is we throw stuff together and it all cooks slowly and all the flavors blend in together. Okay. And now for some diced tomatoes. And I happen to like when making chili, these Rotel diced tomatoes with green chilies. Uh, you can use regular diced tomatoes if you want. And I'm going to throw in two cans of those. Because these cans are kind of small. And with cooking in the crock pot, it's good to get your solid ingredients in first and then uh, add any liquid stuff later. It's the liquid, uh, then cover with everything, and uh, yeah, everything kind of mix, mixes together. So now I'm throwing in some tomato sauce. A couple cans of that. And then obviously these are two eight ounce cans. If you have one bigger can, that also works. Another thing I'll do is there's a lot of tomato sauce stuck in the bottom of the can. I add a little bit of water, switch it around, try and get as much of those that tomato sauce uh, out of the can. Just add, add that to it. Okay. Uh, and then I just add some vinegar because I like the tang that it. Here's that's about it. Cover it up, plug it in, 
and you set it. So you can set, you know, most crock pots, you can set the cook on either high or low, and even high is still pretty low. Um, it's in the afternoon already, so I'm going to cook this on high uh, for six hours. If I can get my, here we go. Money. There we go. So now we'll start cooking. I just leave it and let it go. We'll be back. Okay, so now the the crock pot has been cooking away for several hours. Uh, I'm going the chicken essentially is cooked. I'm going to pull the chicken out and I'm going to let it cool off and then I'll shred it and put it back in. So here we go. So basically, I'm just pulling out the cooked almost chicken breasts, leaving in uh, the other ingredients. That's why I'm using a slotted spoon so that everything drains out. And as much as possible, I put everything back in. It's smelling good, I'll tell you. No. Last piece. Now at this point, if you wanted, you could taste it and you know if needed adjust any seasoning. I'm going to do that right now. And add some more chili powder. Again, all of this is to taste. <laughs> Stir that in. And I'm going to add some more cumin also. Yeah, stir it all in. Let it continue cooking and taste uh, the flavors all merging together. I'm going to let the, the chicken cool off and we'll be back shortly as I shred it and put it back in. Okay, the chicken breast has cooled off sufficiently. I'm putting a, another pair of Glove, nitrile gloves on so I can handle it partially because it's still a little warm and partially because hey, makes cleanup easy. All right. Rock pot is still cooking away. And you just, at this point, the chicken breast just kind of falls apart. You just pull it apart like this, put it back in. That's basically all there is to it. Uh, and this technique really works uh, for a lot of things. And you'll see, I, I sent you uh, four different recipes for you know, the, the chili that I'm making here and uh, a separate uh, chili, uh, the chili verde uh, that I've made before. Um, and also uh, a pasta sauce and a pulled chicken barbecue. So uh, the technique is basically the same as the ingredients that are different. And you can see all I'm doing is pulling apart the chicken. It's basically just falling apart. It's still a little warm which is, makes it a good thing that I've got these gloves on. Um, 
this other one, it says probably be burning my fingers. It's coming close to that uh, anyway, even with the gloves. So I think you've seen how I do this. Basically, I shred the rest of the chicken breast, then I'll stir it in, put the lid back on, and continue cooking. And we'll see you at the next step. Okay, so as you can see, I've shredded the chicken. Uh, it's all in there. Uh, you can see it sticking up. Um, I'm just going to stir it in with the rest of the chili. This way everything heats up together and all the flavors marry together and it'll be yummy. Now you may notice it looked a little on the thin side. So what I'm going to do is mix up some masa flour, which is just a very fine corn flour. Um, they use this for making tortillas. I'm going to mix it up with a little bit of cold water. The idea is to get it into more or less a horrible paste. You need to do a little bit of time so you don't want to end up with too much oil. And this is what and yeah, uh, what you should have is basically a, a paste it's something that you can pour or spoon into the chili this will help thicken it up you don't have to do this some people prefer a thinner uh, almost soup like chili And you don't have to use masa flour. And, oh, and by the way, I'm just, the, uh, the plate that I had the chicken breast cooling on, anything that's left over, juice wise, vegetable wise, I'm putting them back into the pot. So I stir this. And if you're running, if you're cooking on low heat, I would suggest at this point turning it up. Uh, to the high heat setting. Mine's already on the high heat setting. Uh, mix it all in. Let it go for like another 20, 30 minutes or so. Okay, our chili is ready. You can see the finished product right there. And I'm getting ready to have some. I'm going to have some rice here. I usually like to have rice with my chili. You can also do pasta, you can just have it like that. Go. In the video, we did chili, and tonight I'm going to put together uh, the ingredients for uh, a pasta sauce. And it's basically the same technique, uh, but you know we're not going to be around for the finished product. It's going to cook overnight. I'll shred the chicken in the morning, and I'll you know have it for dinner tomorrow night.
But again, start by putting the, the chicken. And again, this is about three pounds worth of chicken uh, or you know, boneless chicken breast. Just putting it in. Okay, so now this time I have chopped onions and green bell peppers, not the spicy peppers. Um, and again, I'm not bothering to show you me cutting up vegetables because that would be rather boring. And I'll throw in whole garlic cloves. And again, if you want to dice them up, mince them up, you can do that. If you want to leave them out, you can. If you want to use granulated garlic, uh, you can do that. Um, I like to use the, the whole ones whenever possible. Now for seasonings and I'm putting in crushed red pepper, not a lot of it, but it gives it a little bit of a kick to the sauce that I like. Oregano. And usually I have dried oregano, dried basil. Certainly, you know, if you have, you know, like during the summer, if you have access to fresh basil or fresh oregano, you can do that. I'll throw in some black pepper. And again, I'll hold off on salt for later. And I don't think I put it in the recipe that I typed up, but I'm gonna throw in a couple bay leaves. Because you know, when I make spaghetti sauce from scratch, I usually throw bay leaves in there. All right. I also happen to like mushrooms, so I'm gonna put a can of mushrooms in. Again, that's not in the recipe, but if you like them, you can. And you notice I'm not even bothering to drain the mushrooms because there's a little bit of uh, liquid in there. Uh, it adds flavor and, um, you know, you're gonna need liquid in there anyway, so. Diced tomatoes, and these are just regular diced tomatoes, not the spicy ones like I used in the chili. Jar of pasta sauce. This is marinara sauce. I suggest using something fairly basic like a marinara sauce or uh, basil, uh, tomato and basil, uh, not with a lot of other uh, spices and stuff in there. Just sort of dump that in. And I always rinse out the jar or the can to crank it everything. Not a lot of water, but enough just to rinse everything out. And as I said before, you need a little bit of water in there. Do the same with the uh, canned tomatoes. And there you have it. Put the cover, start it up, and now it's cooking. So as I said, it will cook all night. In the morning, I'll pull the chicken out, I'll let it cool, I'll shred it, I'll put it back in, I'll keep it warm all day. If it's too thin, I could always add in a, a can of tomato paste. Uh, 
And, you know, you can also add tomato sauce if you want. Um, oh, and I usually add a little bit of vinegar too, because I can. It, I like the way it balances out the flavor. Now, I'll entertain questions. Is there a difference between a crock pot and an instant pot? Bob Watts so, already answered, but see what you have to say, and then we'll compare. <laughs> well, yeah, so, yeah, an instant pot. It can work like a crock pot, but can also work like a pressure cooker. So you could actually do this in an instant pot and it would probably cook a lot faster. Uh, you know, if you're doing the, the pressure cooker uh, function. And uh, I don't have an instant pot, so I, uh, I use the crock pot. Uh, some of my kids have instant pots and you know, they certainly use them. Larry, if I can make, if I can say one thing about this, you said exactly what I had put in the chat. Yeah, it was pretty close, Bob. <laughs> huh? It was pretty close. Yes, yeah, including an article. But one nice thing about the Instapot is that, uh, if it matters to you, that you can change the change the internal pot in it, right? So I have one dairy and one meat, so I can just use the same. Uh, device and change the change the inside of it uh, you know if that that meets my standard of gosh <laughs> it is. Oh, for that, oh, very nice <laughs> uh, for that matter you could uh i would imagine you could get another one of these ceramic inserts for this particular crock pot this is happens to, it's not a commercial but this happens to be a crock pot brand crock pot. Uh, there's there it's kind of like Kleenex. You know, there, there's a brand <laughs> right. there's tissues pot. and then there's Kleenex, but everything's Kleenex. Right. right. It, it's uh all these slow cookers are generically called crock pots, even though there's only really one brand of crock pot. But um yeah I think a lot of them you could probably get a, another insert. Um, you know, and, and do the same thing. Yeah, we have another question. What is the point of shredding the chicken? Would it taste dry? No, it. Uh, uh, well, it just, instead of having big chunks of chicken, um, you know, you end up with, um, you know, the chicken is shredded and it's distributed throughout the sauce. And where uh, one of the recipes I included was for whole chicken barbecue. And basically you put the uh, chicken breast in, you dump barbecue sauce on it, you let it go in the slow cooker, you shred it, you put it back in, and uh, you can make whole chicken barbecue sandwiches uh, along with coleslaw and hot sauce if you so desire. Um, you could do it, you know, with hamburger rolls. You could do it with, you know, little slider rolls. Um, you know, works out well for a party. And I've done that before. Larry, it's Paul Pizer. How sensitive are these recipes to the length of time that you're going to cook them in this thing? Um, six hours and then overnight, that could be, what, 10 hours? I mean, what? Yeah, it, it really, it's a crock pot. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, normally what people do with a crock pot is, you know, they'll put something in the crock pot in the morning, maybe go to work. When they come home, dinner is, you know, ready or, you know, 90% ready. Uh, so let's say in the case of this pasta sauce, you know, all you have to do is cook the pasta and maybe make a salad and, you know, you have dinner. Uh, you know, I wouldn't normally start it at this time, but, uh, you know, it, it certainly works. Uh, and I'll, 
you know, as I said, I'll shred the chicken in the morning and I'll put it back in and I'll let it keep warm all day and you know, make the pasta tomorrow night. What's the purpose of the vinegar? That for flavor. I mean, I, I like the way it balances out um, the, I guess, sweetness of the tomatoes. Um, and I also put it in uh, chili. Um, it, it's personal taste. Not everybody likes it. You don't have to put it in. The recipes that I sent out um, and I believe we'll hopefully have give, be able to give you access to them tomorrow. Um, but they, you know, I, they have sort of arbitrary measurements and ingredients on them. Uh, you know, you can adjust it to your, to your own taste. I, I'm basically trying to show the technique and, you know, you can ad probably adapt it to a bunch of different things. Now, one, one thing I tried once, um, I'm sure a lot of us are fans of uh, stuffed cabbage, you know, with a uh, sweet and sour sauce. Um, and I, I've, uh, over the years, I stopped doing stuffed cabbage. I did what I call unstuffed cabbage, where I just basically made the sauce, made the meatballs, threw them in, chopped up the cabbage and put it in and didn't bother stuffing it. That was because when my children were little, they would pull the meatball out of the cabbage and eat the meatball and not the cabbage. So uh, I decided not to stuff them anymore. But I tried doing this once with, uh, with my stuffed cabbage recipe or unstuffed cabbage recipe. And it, it, I mean, it was okay, but it didn't work as well as having meatballs. I'm sorry to say. Takes a lot of work and preparation, but as I put in the chat here, uh, we'd love to get more volunteers. And what would be a better group than this group that's watching Larry tonight? I thank you very, very much for all the work that you did to put this. It looks to, it smells great, Larry. Looks, <laughs> smells really great. I can smell it all the way up here in Newton. Uh, Good. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. If I can get one of you to volunteer, we'll have the next cooking webinar. Uh, we have all kinds of webinars from sports to finance to Yiddish. Uh, to uh, Shomri Aritz, uh, all kinds. And uh, this was one of the first ones we started, believe it or not, now four years ago. The pandemic was four years old. And uh, cooking and sports were the first two that we started. And it's nice that we're able to sustain, sustain that. So uh, at the Federation of Jewish Men's Club. So uh, if that, no other questions? Thank you very much, Larry Yashikoach, and uh, we'll see everyone next time. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank all you for coming to watch.